Hello, and welcome to Module 2, the Peer Assessment Method of Critical Incident Analysis. This course is organized in two modules. This module, Module 2, provides details about one way to use root cause analysis using the peer assessment approach. This approach encourages individuals to participate in a group discussion to determine root causes after a disaster incident. Module 1 defined critical incidents and the basics of root cause analysis. This module is designed for public health practitioners, emergency management, academic researchers, healthcare workers, and anyone that may work on challenging public health events and wishes to learn from those events. In particular, this module provides guidance for those who may serve as a requester or on a peer assessment team. After you take this module, you'll be able to describe critical incidents, understand the peer assessment approach, identify the key tasks and timeline, and have an awareness of the roles and responsibilities in a peer assessment. This module is organized into three parts. Part A provides a short review of critical incident and root cause analysis and provides an introduction to peer assessment analysis. Part B describes the different roles and responsibilities in peer assessment, and in Part C we'll go into more detail about the tasks and timeline of the peer assessment process, using a case study involving a West Nile virus outbreak in Texas. At the end of the course, we'll have a short summary. Let's review critical incidents. A critical incident has one or more of the following characteristics. It occurs suddenly or with minimal warning. There's a high potential for injury, loss, or conflict. Response capabilities are overwhelmed. There is a significant social disruption or the event significantly altered systems behavior or beliefs. A public health critical incident is one where public health played a significant role in the response. The event could have also tested one or more public health emergency preparedness capabilities, also referred to as FEP capabilities, and or captured the FEP community's attention. Public health critical incidents include events such as the anthrax attacks in 2001, the H1N1 outbreak in 2009, the West Nile virus outbreak in Texas in 2012, and many others. Because these public health events are rare singular events, we examine and analyze them in detail to improve future responses. Let's continue our review with a quick explanation of root cause analysis. Root cause analysis asks why an outcome happened. This method keeps digging deeper to uncover the root of the problem. The objective or goal of the response is the ultimate mission of a response or process. The response challenge is the particular element that limited the ability to meet the objective. The immediate causes are what led to this response challenge. Contributing factors, or root causes, lead to these immediate causes that had a direct impact if response objectives were met. Lessons learned are recommendations for preventing similar response challenges in future events. Ad hoc adaptations and solutions are included in root cause analysis so they can be noted as possible future practice changes. Evaluation by peers offers the potential for objective analysis of response strengths and weaknesses and at the same time can be an effective way to share best practices. Peer assessment can not only help the jurisdiction who experienced an adverse event, but can also increase communication and organizational learning across jurisdictions. This peer assessment method includes guided interviews with multiple levels of responders and provides an approach to group brainstorming and problem solving, important steps in completing a comprehensive root cause analysis. This group session is called a facilitated look back meeting. When reviewing a critical event response and performing a root cause analysis, there may be many opinions to consider from a diverse range of stakeholders. Identifying and prioritizing response challenges, immediate and root causes, and lessons learned in a large group setting needs to be a facilitated discussion. Who's involved in a peer assessment? Let's take a look at the different roles. We'll start with the requester, who reaches out and requests a peer assessment. 
Typically, the requester is one of the responders to the incident or was directly impacted by it. The requester will most likely have worked with other responders in this response. The peer assessment team, comprised of one or more experienced professional peers familiar with the jurisdiction. Lastly, we have the group of responders and stakeholders involved in the response or experienced its consequences. The peer assessment process is designed to highlight the root causes of system successes and failures and lead to thoughtful lessons learned and improvement strategies that can be institutionalized. Peer assessment offers direct benefit to the requester, who has the assistance of a peer assessment team as they tackle the after-action reporting process. Through the use of a neutral facilitator and a no-fault approach, dimensions of decisions are probed and nuances in past decision-making explored in detail through discussions with public health leaders and key staff, as well as a variety of community stakeholders involved with the response. During the look-back session, the facilitator guides the discussion and asks probing questions surrounding key issues about what happened at various points in the incident chronology, key decisions that were made by various stakeholders, and how decisions were perceived and acted upon by others. A root cause analysis model is used to identify the root causes of a response challenge. The peer assessment method has three steps. After an incident or disaster event occurs, an assessment request is made, usually by a response participant or administrator. The next step involves data gathering and investigation of the incident circumstances and the response activities, including barriers and challenges. The final step ends with an analysis report that summarizes the peer assessment findings and contains recommendations for future responses. To help understand the peer assessment method, we'll use the West Nile virus case study presented in Module 1. In the summer of 2012, the Dallas-Fort Worth area experienced a severe West Nile virus outbreak. Over 1,800 human cases were confirmed, and 86 deaths were reported in Texas. We'll apply the three steps of peer assessment to analyze this outbreak, the response, and its challenges. Let's take a closer look at requesting a peer assessment. The peer assessors may be identified by the requesters by selecting practitioners from contacts in other jurisdictions or states. In some cases, state health departments or national professional organizations may help to identify appropriate peer assessors. Following the West Nile virus outbreak in 2012, the Texas State Health Department drafted an initial after-action report for the incident. As they reviewed this draft report, they felt certain response issues and decisions deserved a more thorough investigation. They then requested a peer assessment to provide a deeper analysis of the response challenges encountered in trying to monitor, control, and respond to this viral outbreak in their area. A practitioner in the Houston area who was familiar with public health emergency preparedness was contacted to assist in reviewing the response to the West Nile virus outbreak in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. In the second step, the peer assessment team collects data by reviewing existing documentation. Any notes, incident reports, photos, and even videos may prove valuable. The peer assessment team will collect the majority of the data for their assessment through in-person interviews, both one-on-one -on -one and small groups, and most importantly, a facilitated look-back session. In Texas, state health officials shared their existing documentation, including incident reports, with the peer assessor. A teleconference was held and consisted of a planning discussion and an incident review to establish potential response challenges and key issues to discuss with meeting participants. The teleconference also provided an informal interviewing opportunity for the state officials to share any ongoing challenges. In addition, participants started planning the larger facilitated look-back session, including possible invitees and agenda items. 
The peer assessment facilitated look back session is a guided discussion session. This format is different than a typical hot wash and is intended to get at the root causes of response challenges rather than initial impressions. The peer assessment team leads the group in the root cause analysis process and encourages communication and collaboration across jurisdictions. All of the individuals and organizations that played key roles in the response should be included or represented, as well as participants with varying perspectives. Suggested meeting participants include leaders of the emergency response, emergency responders, hospital and other healthcare delivery system representatives, volunteer coordinators, coalition leaders, and government workers involved in emergency declaration activities. Facilitated meeting participants may have different opinions and viewpoints about response challenges, causes, and even response objectives based on their professional experience and background, role in the response, and other factors. The facilitator focuses the discussion on organizational and systems response instead of individuals' performance. The process of deep analysis described here is likely to identify more issues than a more superficial analysis. For instance, issues that appear at first to be personal conflicts between different people who were involved with the response often reflect deeper systems issues that are easier and more useful to talk about. Invitations to a facilitated look-back session should emphasize the systems improvement spirit of the meeting and the no-fault zone attitude that will encourage open discussion. The facilitator leads the discussion using the root cause analysis model. Meeting discussion points are documented by a note taker and serve as the basis for the final analysis report. Adopting a problem solving attitude toward the root cause analysis process will help keep the discussion on track and maximize participation. In Texas, the facilitated look back session was attended by representatives from three counties as well as state health officials. To start the facilitated look-back discussion, a story arc is defined to provide context for the disaster event. This also serves to refresh meeting participants' memory of the incident, particularly if some time has passed since the response. Next, response challenges are discussed and prioritized. Emergencies usually involve a host of response challenges, and the facilitator considers the participants' perceptions of the most important response challenges. To frame the response challenges, it's important to consider the response needs and the goals and objectives. What did the public health system hope to achieve in responding to this event? The peer assessment facilitator helps the group prioritize the response challenges and select one or two response challenges for more in-depth analysis. In the case of the Texas West Nile virus outbreak, three pivotal response challenges were brought up by the group. Surveillance data, mitigation through aerial spraying, and communication through atypical channels and with the public. We'll follow the Texas case study as they discuss challenges related to outbreak surveillance. Surveillance involves tracking the spread of the West Nile virus throughout the community. The group agreed that the objective in their chosen challenge, surveillance, was to provide situational awareness of West Nile virus to guide response efforts. The response challenges in this incident were in obtaining consistent and reliable data to track human West Nile virus cases and deaths and in monitoring West Nile virus in mosquito pools to guide local control efforts. Once a response challenge has been selected for deeper analysis, the discussion turns to identifying the immediate factors that contributed to the response challenge. The facilitator uses the following criteria to help the group solidify the immediate causes. What decision-making and organizational factors influence the response actions? What human factors, such as staff actions, training, and expertise, impacted the response? And what population factors, such as demographics and hazard vulnerabilities, were involved? Facilitators may use a number of discussion techniques as they help meeting participants identify immediate causes for each response challenge. 
In our West Nile virus example, meeting participants offered a number of immediate causes for the problems encountered. Texas public health practitioners explained lab testing to the group and explained that the combination of state, county, and private labs yielded inconsistent results and delays in data transmission of lab results. Group participants acknowledged that communication is often an issue in emergencies and helped public health practitioners realize that unfamiliar emergency channels had complicated the process. For each immediate cause, the facilitator guides the discussion towards root causes or contributing factors. In our Texas example, it was found that the various types of labs, state, local, and private labs, had different testing standards, using different criteria for classifying a West Nile virus case. Different labs also use different procedures to test mosquito pools, making it difficult to compare results. The existence of multiple data systems further complicated reporting and data transmission, and routine protocols did not work when overwhelmed with the dramatically increased volume of the tests being performed. Further discussion revealed that lab capacity varied widely. Dallas County was able to test all their own samples. Tarrant County had limited processing, while Denton County, a more rural county, did not have their own capacity. In Texas, one ad hoc mechanism developed at the spur of the moment involved using blast emails between the state and local health departments to share report data as soon as it was received. Lessons learned suggested the need for clear, comprehensive, uniform data systems and a central incident command system in each county that then coordinates with the state regional office and with the other counties. After the participants completed the root cause analysis for their surveillance response challenge, the facilitator helped them with similar discussion processes for the other response challenges that they had identified earlier involving mitigation and communication challenges. Sometimes discussion points may be so sensitive that they can't be included in a public report. However, discussing these sensitive topics during the facilitated look-back session provides a learning opportunity for all the meeting participants, regardless of jurisdiction. Another benefit of the peer assessment approach is the strengthening of response partnerships and often a more realistic understanding of partners' roles and responsibilities during a disaster event. After the site visit, the assessment team discusses the collected data with the requester and then writes a final analysis report. This report is a collaborative effort. The assessors get requesters' input and respond to any concerns that may be raised by the requester or response partners. Unlike typical after-action reports, peer assessment reports do not need to include every corrective action identified. Instead, the purpose is to identify issues and potential solutions that might be relevant in other situations. This report may include an overview, context, incident description, analysis, and recommendations. In Texas, the peer assessors shared their root cause analysis diagrams and corresponding summary with the requesting practitioners. The requesters then commented on the diagrams and made a few substantive suggestions based on their perception of the facilitated look-back session. The final report contained recommendations for changing protocols and processes for the future. These recommendations were in line with what was discussed at the on-site meeting. In summary, we started with a short review of critical incident and root cause analysis, followed by an introduction to the peer assessment approach. The different roles and responsibilities in peer assessment were described, and then we went into more detail about the tasks and timeline of the peer assessment process, using a case study involving a West Nile virus outbreak in Texas.